call me Max. The media called me Mad Max. According to Gelman, he was a mid-level drug dealer working in South Brooklyn, moving tens of thousands of dollars of cocaine and Oxycontin a week. By his account, he became a successful drug dealer. By other accounts, uh, he was a user who did a little dealing to uh, procure drugs. But in early February 2011, he becomes convinced the feds are on to him. I went and purchased a kilo of cocaine, and when I was driving back, the Brooklyn Bridge, every car that was around me had official plates. All these cars were following me, and my cell phone was dying very fast, the battery. The text messages were messed up, and my cell phone was calling people by itself. At that time, I kind of put it together, the feds, so they tapped my cell phone and they were following me. That night, Gelman claims he was paranoid and desperate. He comes up with a plan. It's best that I just lay low and don't do anything from now on. So that night, I ordered some tickets to Dominican Republic. But first, he needs his passport and to say goodbye to the most important person in his life, the one woman he loved and trusted completely. His mother. My real father died in Russia. I never even seen him. So five in the morning, I ended up going to my mother's house to get my passport. You know, I'm waking her up. Listen, I just need my passport. You know, I got into some things, and I have the feds on me, and I have to lay low. And she thought I was drunk. Gelman and his mother have always protected each other ever since emigrating from the Ukraine when he was just seven. So she takes my keys. You can't be driving. You've been drinking. I'm like, Mom, listen, this is serious. I got to get out of here. And then my stepfather comes in. Gelman despised his stepfather. So this guy comes in stinking, just fat, ugly Russian with some dirty briefs and a gut, talking all kind of obscenities in Russian. I was paranoid, and I was angry. I don't want to hear this So I stabbed him with the kitchen knife. Just begging for help, screaming for my mother. Sveta, Sveta, pozvani policiju. Call the police, call the police. He's killing me, he's killing me. When the kitchen knife breaks during the attack, Gelman turns to a carving fork. Mad Max stabs his stepfather a total of 55 times. My mother, she picked up the phone and I looked at her and I'm like, she's not gonna call the police and I kept stabbing him. I didn't think nothing of it. She picked up the phone and she called the police. And I was shocked. I was like, my old mother called the police on me. I love my mother. I would never hurt my mother took the keys, and I left. NYPD learns from Gelman's mother that he is driving a 2004 silver Lexus. They issue a bolo alert to patrol units in Sheepshead Bay. As Gelman drives on, a twisted logic takes hold of him. I realized I got the feds on me, and now I just caught a body, and I'm probably not going to come home anytime soon. If he's going down, He's not going down alone. The people that were snitching on me, that were working with the feds, and people have done things to me. All these people, in Gelman's sick mind, must die. Why? Because they were rats. Gelman's number one target, 20-year-old Yelena Bolchenko, a former friend who lives only four blocks from his mother's house. 10 AM. At Yelena's house, it's the start of a usual day for her mother, Anna, who works out of her home as a travel agent. Her mother opened the door. She invited me in. And I was like, where's Yelena? Anna knows exactly where her daughter is, at a friend's house two blocks away. I was like, where's Yelena? She's like, she's at work. I'm like, where does she work? And. She wouldn't tell me. She was like, why are you asking all these questions? 
she told me, she's like, okay, okay, I'll tell you where she is. And she tried to trick me, and then she ran for the door. She opened the door, and there was a neighbor outside. And they're kicking the door closed, so he didn't see it. And she ran to the kitchen where she had like a wooden knife set, and I found the big knife. And I'm thinking, I can't get Elena because she's not here. Might as well get her mother because she's the closest person to her. Gelman stabs Anna with the big kitchen knife a dozen times. While I was stabbing her, she said, you know, I'll never tell you who my daughter is. I drove by King's Highway. I was looking for Elena's job. She worked as a dental assistant on King's Highway. Elena found her mother's body, called 911, and was on the phone in a quite hysterical tone. At the same time Yelena is calling 911, Gelman decides to drive by Yelena's house one last time. At Yelena's house, she waits outside for police and fire rescue to arrive. I pulled up in her driveway, and I have the knife tucked in my sleeve, so when I walked up to her, all her neighbors were outside. She ran to her neighbors, grabbed one of the neighbors' hand. One of the neighbors tries to intervene, and Max goes around him. He was waving the knife, slashing at the neighbor's coat. Elena's hooked on the back of him for dear life, saying he's going to kill me. Please help me, somebody. The neighbor's in the middle. They get into a wrestling match. Gelman overpowers the neighbor and pushes him away. He then stabs Elena with the same kitchen knife he used on her mother. She took a couple of steps, fell down. I got back in the car. I backed up. Then I was like, maybe she's not dead. Picked her hip up by her hair. He had cut her throat from side to side, tried to chop her head off. While Gelman is still stabbing her, fire rescue, responding to Yelena's 911 call for her mother's murder, approaches the house. One fireman sees the kid, sees Max, and chases him down the block. But Gelman manages to outrun him and speeds off in his car. Within minutes, patrol units begin rushing to Yelena's house. Gelman immediately abandons his Lexus in the middle of the street and approaches a nearby Pontiac. The driver has no idea he's facing a triple murderer. I mean, I went to the guy, knocked on his window, said, excuse me, sir. The guy lowered his window. I jumped through his window, pulled out the knife. I told him, get the f out the car. The guy just looked at me like I'm crazy. You know, he wasn't taking me serious. Gelman stabs the driver twice. He jumped out the car, and I drove away. The 57-year-old man is taken to the hospital in critical condition. He came fairly close to dying. He was seriously hurt. But he manages to survive. I just needed the cars. I didn't want to kill innocent people. I needed to get around. But you're stabbing them. They're not going to give up the car just like that. At a nearby intersection, 62-year-old Stephen Tannenbaum is crossing the street. I heard something, a noise on the roof. I didn't even see anything. All I seen was a crack in the windshield and the guy in the flying over the car. Pontiac that he had just stolen smashes into Mr. Tannenbaum. Tannenbaum, a rare coin expert, is taken to the hospital where he is pronounced dead. Responding cops soon connect Tannenbaum's hit and run to Gilman. 12 hours into Gilman's rampage, darkness falls over Brooklyn and he has disappeared. I just laid in the car until it was morning time. 24 hours since Gilman's killing spree began. Queens, New York. The car wouldn't start. By 8.35 AM, Gilman is in Manhattan on a southbound train. NYPD quickly zeroes in on Gilman's train, one that's just pulling out of Times Square. So somewhere between 34th Street and Times Square, the police realize that they are close to him. 
They immediately radio the motorman of the train. Then they stop the train and there's an ongoing police investigation. Gelman realizes he's been spotted and is cornered on a train stop between stations. So I jumped off the train into the train tunnel, into train tracks, and I seen the police were entering with the flashlights. I had my knife in my jacket tucked in. Gelman is trapped. Then he sees a possible escape, a train slowly moving in the opposite direction. I jumped onto the moving train in between cars. I went to the conductor's booth, knocked on the door. I said, this is official business. Open the door. This is official business. And because that way they think, you know, there's some kind of emergency and they would open the door like I'm one of them. So if I get the conductor, you know, I'll put the knife to him and I could hijack the train to get out of there. And I said it even louder. This is official business. Open the door right now. And the cop opened the door. So I took out the knife. I went to stab the police officer. I missed him by like an inch. Went to stab him in the stomach. He slammed the door right away. And this bold guy was all nosy what was going on. He was right there. He was staring at me. The bald man is six foot three, 270 pound Joe Lozito. Lozito throws Gelman off balance. Together, they fall on the subway floor. And he's behind my head, doing this to the back of my head. And I'm hearing him grunt. I'm hearing him going, mm, mm, mm. Now I have blood pouring out of both sides of my neck. During the fight, one of the officers in the conductor's cabin sees an opening. And while I was stabbing him, the police officer came out. He pulled out the gun. The cop was a big guy, you know? Pointed the gun at me, but I was still stabbing the guy, so he put the gun away back in his holster, and he grabbed both of my arms. He overpowered me. And that's how he caught me. After 28 hours, four murders, four wounded, immeasurable mayhem, chaos, and destruction, the cold-blooded killer is finally apprehended in Times Square. Gelman pleads guilty to four counts of murder and multiple counts of robbery, assault, and carjacking. I was like, I wouldn't want to be in a mental hospital for the rest of my life, because there's people that are really mental.